Almost half of Africa's countries are classified as low income and are home to around half of its total and youth population. It will be up to this youth to mobilize against current conditions and create a future they envision for themselves. The nice thing about uh, the situation that we have is that um, the population is so young that if, if, if youth mobilize and actually create a youth party, you can win an election. You can actually create, you know, I mean, 60, 70 percent of the population of the pop, of the electorate is below the age of, of 30 in most countries. So at the end of the day, we as the youth should stop complaining and actually take action. You know, unless we create our own, uh, you know, youth parties and get ourselves into power. Because the, the, the issue of leadership is the single most thing that, important thing, lever that's going to drive change in the short term, right? And it actually is, doesn't take that much time. All you have to do is go to Rwanda to see what I'm talking about. Now, Paul Kagame has many, you know, he's not a perfect leader, right? Let's, let's, let's say that. Sure. But there are things that he has done in 20 years. Mm. If you're looking at what has happened when, when they were, where they were 20 years ago after the genocide, it's far worse than almost any country in Africa is today. Right? Yet the, the strides they've made in 20 years in terms of improvements in, in, in you know, child mortality and uh, health and ed- statistics and education and all these things, and infrastructure. I mean, the economy is, you know, and they are, you know, if they continue where they're going, mm. in another 20, 30 years, they'll be out of, you know, it'll be a really prime example of what's going to happen. Really that but that it's all about, about leadership. Yeah. So yeah. unless we take political power, yeah. and actually because we don't have strong institutions in Africa, mm. and so just one or two leaders can actually make or break a country. I was born in a village in Zimbabwe and I live in Switzerland. We need to think about 2030 from an African young person being a global citizen. And not only from the notion of being Afrocentric as if the world will always be confined because thought, knowledge, technology, capital is so transacted every day across boundaries. Mm. But at times when you talk about young people, when you talk about the future, it's as if we would just be confined here. So I'm looking at Generation 2030 in a way that Africa and its young people is part of harvesting the global, the, that youth dividend mm. has to be part of a globalized conversation. To feel a sense of outrage that 50% of all under five deaths are in this continent, yeah. that 75% of all the people living under $1.25 a day are on this continent that there are more kids living in fragile situations or out of school on this continent. Are you outraged by that? Yes. Well, if you are outraged by that, then do two things, which I used to say to people in Latin America. I used to be an economist, I used to work in Latin America. They would always go and say, well, we've got this big debt crisis, and, you know, it was the fund, the IMF, and mm-hmm. their policies, mm-hmm. and all the debt is owed to Western banks, and we have bad leaders. And after listening to this for a number of the years, I kind of went and said, Look, there's two things you've got to do, because I'm a little bit tired of hearing this. One, take responsibility for your own actions. Yeah. You're in control of your lives. And secondly, look for your own solutions. The real challenge of changing Africa is at a country level, and the way we change a country is by building power at a local level. Mm. So we've got to go back into the villages, into the communities, into the, into the, into the slums, and organize our people. There's innovative solutions that don't even require any government intervention. Mm. At the end of the day, when you've done something, you go to government and say, this is what you've got to scale up. What is a politician interested in? In staying in power. I've been there, so I know that. <laughs> uh, so what is the thing that the politician is scared of? They're scared of demonstrations in the street and someone banging on their door. Yeah. They're scared to lose the election uh, at the ballot box. They're scared of reputational damage. And you have a powerful tool that no one can control in your hands. And that's Twitter and the Facebook and the social media. They are powerful tools. Use them to effectively. You should be tweeting everything we're debating here across the world. You have, a, you have the world at your disposal You need to take this conversation into the rest of Africa. You need to be connecting with millions of young people who feel as frustrated as you are. Agreed. And so I think ultimately it's about taking the solutions we know work. It's not rocket science, this. We hope you enjoyed our coverage of the Generation 2030 Africa Report. Many thanks to UNICEF, and until next week, take care.